ఓకే గీత ధ్యానం ఓ భగవద్ గీత బై విచ్ అర్జున వాజ్ ఇల్లుమెంట్ బై లోడ్ కృష్ణ హిమ్సాఫ్ and which was composed of 18 chapters within the Mahabharata by the ancient sage Vyasa. O Divine Mother, destroyer of rebirth, who showers the nectar of oneness upon us. O Bhagavad Gita, my affectionate mother, on thee I meditate. All of the Upanishads are the cows. The milker is the cowherd boy, Krishna. Arjuna is the calf people of purified intellect are the drinkers and the milk is the supreme nectar of the gita my salutations to the lord who is the source of supreme bliss whose grace makes the mute eloquent and the crippled cross mountains hari om tat sat Okay, we're going to pick up um, Swami Shivananda's commentary this morning on these um, verses, starting with 14, coming back to 14, that's where we started. Um, and here Lord Krishna is describing Brahman, and therefore the way to union with Brahman. So, union with Brahman... is simply recognizing brahman and and finally recognizing brahman wherever brahman is which is everywhere uh, um which is why it's called self realization so or to realize mm, firmly so here um and these are straight from upanishads these and we've covered some of them in our some of our upanishad workshops these these particular uh, shlokas related to the nature of the absolute so coming back to 14 shining by the functions of all of the senses yet without the senses and you notice we talked a little bit about this yesterday morning these particular verses are all like this um because what's being described is something subtle so subtle that we're missing it because we can't perceive it with the senses uh, um so we go through this series of this happens <laughs> but it's not this so shining by the functions of the senses yet yet without the senses unattached yet supporting all devoid of qualities yet their experiencer so nirguna is the in the sanskrit word devoid of qualities um yeah the gunas the play of the nature play of nature is occurring within it and it is experiencing the the play just from a very practical sense you, you can see this in a way within yourself and and this wow you can see that you are always experiencing is it correct so you had pain in the body yesterday I heard you talking about it who experienced the pain just answer the question i, I guess um who no who experienced the pain? the pain i experienced the pain is it not so did you experience the pain So no, did you experience the pain? Of course you did, didn't you? It's very simple. Feel like it. Feel yeah, of course you like did. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah, it's not don't let that deceive you. Of course you did. You experienced it. Ah. But you're taking yourself to be to be this mind in this body. So somehow somehow it's as if the pain is you, but the pain is clearly not you. because clearly you experienced it is it correct ah so where in this body are you that's experiencing this pain hmm so it's a funny one um you can't be if you're experiencing it you can't be <laughs> ah it's just like riding the horse that you were talking about the other day you know 
If you're riding the horse, are you the horse or are you riding the horse? And you're experiencing the horse. And this is the this is this whole discussion in the field and the knower of the field is is recognizing where you are in this and recognizing where the Lord is in this. Um, and recognizing what this is, this play, this play of the this play of the senses. So the pain is experienced, right? Yeah? That's your experience, isn't it? The pain is experienced. I had pain yesterday. Do you have that pain now, that same pain? No, okay. So I had that pain yesterday. You could say a, a different way. I experienced that pain yesterday, right? And now it's just a memory, isn't it? The pain's not there, so there's a memory of having experienced pain yesterday. Uh, who experienced it? I did. So not knowing what I is, it's still okay. Because now you can say, my God, everything that happens to me, I experience it. Even the stuff happening in the body, I experience, right? Huh. What about the stuff happening in the mind? What about the idea of running away? Do you experience that? Yeah. <laughs> Is it you? Are you the horse? <laughs> How can you experience what you are, it's very interesting. And so we're, you see, in order for you to have an experience, the experience has to be other from you. And has to be apart, as it were, from you, in order to have an experience. Oh. It reminds me also, when you're in the car, when you're driving the car, if you feel something hit the car or aimed on it, it, you, it hurts you. Yeah. Like, Ugh, but, but actually, uh, in this case, so you could say that I'm experiencing what the car is experiencing. Yeah. yeah. Well, in other words, the car is having some experience and I'm experiencing what the car is experiencing. Oh. But even that is an experience, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, if it's not an experience, how can you even talk about it? There we go. <laughs> uh, oh. um, the shiite just reminded me that the experience of the emotions is the same, in that maybe with like how when you experience that emotion so deeply, you so identify with so it. So identified with it. Mm. But it's, it's the same. But it's an experience. And it's an experience. And just like, just like every experience, every experience comes and goes. So how can you be that which is constantly changing? Mm -hmm. uh. And so this discussion is, is occurring here. And, but because we're so wrapped up in the identification, then the mind is not so subtle. And so it's very hard to catch it because we're wrapped up in the identification. It's only that, it's only that, but it's clearly what's happening. And so who's the experiencer? And here where Krishna is saying, Brahman is the experiencer, meaning I and Brahman are one, uh, which is true at the deepest sense, it's absolutely true. So continuing, shining by the functions of all the senses, yet without the senses, unattached, yet supporting all, devoid of qualities, yet their experiencer. So we were just saying what's being discussed here on a macro level is the same as what as your experience on a micro level. So here you have a relationship with this body. You experience what the body is experiencing. Just like you experience what the car is experiencing. But you also experience what's happening inside the body. Right? Pain, emotions, thoughts, desires, uh, the digestive system. You know, if you bring your awareness to the digestive system, you find out you're experiencing the digestion of food. Mm. So this concept where Lord Krishna is saying, Brahman, the absolute, is the one experiencer of all that is experienced in the field. So its meaning is the same. 
at a macro level, its meaning is the same as what, what we're talking about on a micro level, on a smaller level. And actually, the experiencer, there are not two experiencers, and this is being shared. It's not like I'm experiencing this, and Brahman is experiencing all of this at a macro. Not really, that's not what's being said, but we get it step by step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, devoid of qualities, yet they're experiencer. Mm -hmm. Continuing. Swami Shivananda says, Brahmana is transcendental. We know what transcendental means. Transcends all. Transcends. So transcendental, we hear the concept of transcendental experience or transcendental. Transcendental experience meaning um, above this body or out of body like that. Beyond. 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 He's on me beyond. Another but beyond doesn't mean apart, actually. It's, uh, sorry? Omni could be a good word. Yeah. Omni, transcend, not exactly the no. same meaning. Um, transcend beyond is a good, okay. is a good yeah. way to deal. Um, but also, Omni is true of Brahman. Oh, <laughs> oh absolutely. <laughs> Okay, Brahman is transcendental and unmanifest, but it manifests itself through the limiting adjuncts of the external and internal senses. As it is destitute of the senses, it is unattached and yet it supports all. It is the support or substratum of everything. It is destitute, so it does not have, of the qualities of nature, and yet it is the enjoyer of those qualities. So hard to grasp. So he says, Brahman is mysterious. Swami Shivananda. This requires contemplation. Um, we, we can get it sitting to some, to some level, but the level will be different for each and every one of us, depending upon how subtle has the intellect become. The more we're grasping and holding on to finite realities as real or absolute, that's the intellect that's doing it. That's the conscious mind that's grasping, uh, holding on to ideas. That's happening in the intellect. Intellect constantly choosing every moment choice. But in some, in some ways, it, it will tend to make the same choice every moment, even though it could make a different choice, habitual, but, but still it's a choice. Still, it's a choice every moment. One moment, the choice will be different. And then maybe you continue with that. For example, um, I, I would have always, uh, almost always chosen to, to accept the sensual view of the world sensual, I don't mean sexy, I mean, although that would have been part of it, I mean <laughs> the senses view of the world. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So I would have chosen every moment, generally speaking, to accept the sensual view of the world. So this, of course, is a microphone and this is a, this is a piece of wood and such. That's what the senses in conjunction with the mind are telling me. Huh. But Swami Shivananda is telling me something different. Again, I'm conscious mind here. Huh. Buddha is telling me something different. My own intuition is telling me something different. Right? Yeah, let me just make the point and then you can... Does that make sense? Huh. But still... I chose not to listen to those voices. So that's conscious mind, right? I chose not to listen to that voice. I chose not to pick up Bible or 
Bhagavad Gita or any of that, even though I was aware of them for I don't know how many years. <laughs> because I chose the sensual view of the world, which is within, which is shadow, shadow voice, shadow, ego stuff, feeling of being separate. I chose to, to take myself as separate. Huh? Still, it's an assertion within. It's a feeling. It's not other than that. And we all have experience of transcending that feeling, transcending, going beyond the feeling. Huh? Deep sleep, you transcend it. When you have that moment of meditation, you transcend it. When you lose yourself in work or in service, you transcend it. You don't have any feeling of being separate then. Huh? So it's a feeling. It's also something being experienced. Mm. Every feeling is being experienced, so it's also something being experienced. But I would have chosen that perspective, that, that point of view. Does that make sense, what's being shared? And then in a moment, I made a different choice. In a moment, I made a choice, a particular moment. It wasn't accidental. Every other moment would have led to it. But in a moment, I made the choice to listen to the intuitive self in Swami Shivananda and the Buddha. Ah. And then there would have been moments where I would have gone back and forth. One moment, accepting the, the sensual view. Another moment, with my, with my awareness with Swami Shivananda and what he's saying. Hmm? Back and forth. <laughs> back and forth. But then, in a moment, choosing more this. And finally, a moment where I dedicated my life to this. Whatever my life is, it's not my life anyway. <laughs> Uh, it's Brahman's life. There's only one life. And so it's not my life. Unless Brahman and I are one. And so these, these perspectives are here. And what, and what is being shared is coming from a perspective. And, and when we look at this intellect, what we see is that, is that as long as we're continuing to choose the sensual view, the um, living for the sense items and the uh, experiences and, and all of this, then the, then the intellect is what is called, um, well, the word that comes is dirty, but I'm sure there are other words for it that might be better. Uh, boga, yeah. Um, Impure, wow. impure, wow. not subtle, gross, not subtle. That's better, gross, gross, not subtle. It can't catch subtle concepts. It, it can't deal with subtle concepts. And what we're dealing with here is the most subtle. Um, so depending upon how gross or subtle is our mind now, in this moment, then we'll hear these in a certain way. This is why, it, but the mind is always really becoming more subtle. Because through your experience, you're always learning that this isn't it, and this isn't it, and this isn't it, you see. And so the more you learn that this isn't something that's going to do it for me, Vairagya. Yeah. And discernment starts to starts to develop what's what's beneficial, what's not beneficial, what's real, what's not real. And longing for liberation comes, right? This longing to be free of oneself. You have a taste of that, don't you? Yeah. Um, longing to be free of suffering, longing to be free of oneself. Um, which translates, as we begin to discover, it translates into longing 
to be in union with the Absolute, because that's freedom. To be free of being controlled by the sensual voice. Um, and then speaking again at the conscious mind level. Right? That's where the longing is, is arising, is within the conscious mind, yeah. intellect. Um, and then we develop the, the sixfold virtues, which are control of the senses, control of the mind, uh, sama, uh, balanced mind, like this. We start to withdraw from, from the objects. And then as we go through this process, and this process is a natural process, it's the process of evolution. A yogi can speed it up, right? But it naturally is happening. The, the world is for each and every one of us, the world is making it to happen. <laughs> it has to happen. <laughs> How many births? Countless, but it has, nonetheless, it has to happen. Hmm. So these verses in particular um, are very difficult. I don't, I don't want to plant that and say, well, I can't understand. It just means these verses in particular, verses that want to be contemplated and we want to keep coming back to. But this is the, this is the, it, this is the diamond of the knowledge. This is the Kohinoor, the crest jewel of the knowledge, is knowing this relationship between I, God, nor a field and field and knowing what this field is and knowing it in a way that's firm without doubt where all of the doubt has been resolved this is the this is the knowledge when when this knowledge is here you're called enlightened or not called enlightened it doesn't make any difference what you're called it doesn't bother you <laughs> you're called a saint you're called a terrible person it doesn't make any difference it doesn't it won't bother you because all of that's in the field and everything's here anyway <laughs> and so every opinion is here um, but you'll be no longer shaken by anything. So these particular verses are, are this important. Um, and so the understanding of it won't be absolute first reading, second reading, third reading, fourth reading. You keep living your life, you keep practicing, but, but this, um, this particular discussion is one that we want to keep coming back to. Also, it's so that, that whenever we come back to it, um, more clarity. Mm -hmm will come, uh, more clarity will come. And then you'll have an experience. And many have had this experience of actually experiencing a separation from the field through grace, through grace, where you get it, you see it, not with a physical eye, not with a mind, but the, but the soul experience of of being back from this and seeing it, seeing all of this. This is that second level of consciousness that Ramdas speaks of, where no longer are you wrapped up in the feeling that I am this limited being, and that you actually experience the seeing of it. And and in path, it's it's um, it'll come, it'll come. It's, it, as long as you stay with it, it's certain, it'll come. You can't say when, but it comes. It doesn't last, but it goes in your quiver. <laughs> it now becomes part of your tool set because you have had the experience and you know it. Uh, it's still possible to forget, but you can draw upon it, the experience. Um, it's, the, it's the conscious understanding that that's being cultivated and needs to be cultivated. Conscious mind understanding. And then experience will support. So just to read these next few and then we'll move on in the morning. Um, Without and within all beings, the unmoving and also the moving. Without and within all beings. So where is it not? <laughs> But it's not the being. In other words, it's not the cup 
because there's actually no cup. But it is within what you call the cup. And the cup is made of it. And the cup is what we call cup is, is within it also. Because of its subtlety, unknowable to the senses, can't be known. Uh, and near and far away is that one more. And undivided, yet it exists as if divided in beings. That's a, that's a good one. Undivided, yet it exists as if divided in beings. Uh, in the same way that, that space gets as if divided up, right? as if divided up, the same space from a physics perspective, this cup is the same space that's inside it and outside of it. And from the view of the space itself, it's undivided. But from a limited view, it seems to be. It is as if it's divided in the same way Brahman or the Absolute exists as if divided in beings. It is to be known as the supporter of beings it devours and it generates. That is, it destroys. But devours is the, I suppose, a better translation. Um, the Sanskrit word is being translated as devouring. Devouring. Um, so this constant destruction, constant generation. That, the light of all lights, is said to be beyond darkness. Knowledge, the knowing, knowable, and the goal of knowledge, seated in the hearts of all. That, the light of lights, is said to be beyond darkness. Knowledge, the knowable, and the goal of knowledge, seated in the hearts of all. Okay, we'll come back in the morning. Hmm. Questions or comments, anything? Hara, you had something that you wanted to... to well, I, think, I think it was it was uh, touched upon further in the discussion. But this all brings me to the Isha Upanishad. And sure. What it teaches. Sure. You know. Sure. It's, yeah. it's but the question I had was, does the intellect finally realize to let go of the intellect and the old programming of the intellect, or is that the intellect letting go of the ego. Um, the intellect lets go of all of its prior uh, graspings. Yes. And it grasps the light. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And, and by grasping the light, as it were, it becomes the light, or it becomes as if no. pervaded by the by the light. In other words, it, it works out where to hold on to, where to take its reality, where to take its reality from, um, what to follow, what to follow. And it, and it learns to love to follow. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else? We'll close. Hari? Just asking if anyone has any question or comment or. I was thinking if you dropped all the concepts, if you drop all the concepts, then I will just be hearing sound vibration right now and seeing light, but I mm. wouldn't be able to form anything from No, I'm just seeing Brahman wherever. <laughs> <laughs> appearing as light, appearing as shape, appearing as form, <laughs> appearing as Hari, appearing as Brad. <laughs> uh, you're looking for a physical seeing of some sort, but again, that's not what's being discussed here. Not really, no, I'm looking for. Basically, what if uh, you drop all the mind, 
then how am I going to understand what you're saying right now? Oh, if you drop it all, you don't have to. You already do. <laughs> You know, he just then silence pervades. It's fine. <laughs> full, 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 full. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> it's, it's also own that you're in the world, but not of it. Yeah. So you still have the in the world stuff. I mean, you still see all the forms and. Uh, and you and you see the names, you're aware of the names and like that, but you don't identify yeah. what you're seeing yeah. as a name. Who is Hari anyway? What is Hari? It's a name. Of what? Of Brahman. <laughs> it belongs with somehow with this particular form, but this form changes and somehow the name still belongs with it. That's an association, right? But that doesn't speak to reality, does it? <laughs> this is Brad. Is this really Brad? Hari, look at look at Brad. Is that really Brad? <clears throat> yeah, but if I drop the mind, it cannot function. Oh, that's a concept also. Mm -hmm. But I just did now and I didn't understand anything that you said. Oh. I just heard sounds. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh. So how? You're asking about practice. What do you practice? What do you practice? Okay. Yeah, you practice um, the presence of God. Actively, not passively, actively. You practice the presence of God. You use the intellect in order to practice the presence of God. Everywhere, every moment, that's what you do. That's what you practice. Uh, you don't try to let it be blank. You, you replace the concepts. You well, practice the presence of God. So you still keep that concept. Ah, until you've gone beyond it, until you find yourself beyond it. Okay. Until you, find, until you find yourself free of concept. Ah. It's like um, people, you know, will ask about chanting a mantra. Why in the world do you chant a mantra? What's the relationship between mantra and silence? Well, if you chant the mantra long enough, you'll understand. <laughs> because you'll come to the place of ajapa. Mm -hmm. um, there will be a doubting voice inside. But the only way the doubt can be resolved is to try it. How long is long enough? It might be years. It might be years. I mean, but it'll happen. <laughs> uh, so, it's really a constant practice of the presence, active practice of the presence. <laughs> Seeing deeply, seeing deeply. So it's using the mind, using the intellect, using these instruments as instruments of seeing in the same way that the scientist does. Uh, um, and it, it's, it, it's not absolute truth, it's not. Hurry, there's no, I mean, the absolute truth is here everywhere. The practice itself, to practice anything, it's not a practice of absolute truth. It's a practice that, that is intended to help support the revealing of the truth within. The revealing of it. Um, and so it's all about sama. It's all about bringing the mind to a place of a balance, equanimity and... and uh, steady, right. steadiness, not in order to see some concept any longer, but to but to be present to what is. 
Um, but in order to get there, we're going, we are going through a training process and we are absolutely using concepts, dealing with concepts. Um, but when I look deep, I'm not looking for a name or a form any longer. Right? I'm looking to peel away the names and forms and get to the essence, which is unknowable, but still it can be discovered and known of. Uh, um, this is the concept of looking deeply, looking deeply, um, seeing the interconnection of all of these things that I had taken to be independently real and actually looking for the and meditating upon and contemplating upon and then looking again and keep coming back and looking again. So until it, there is a place where the mind will then naturally become centered Mind, intellect, intellect is what we're talking about. Um, but until then, it's as if we have to hold it in our hands and continue to utilize it as the scriptures, as Swami Shivananda are guiding us to utilize it. Uh, um, And I hear you, I can go to, it, it's possible to blank. You can't hold it there is the thing, right? You can't hold it there. You can experience it and, and, and but that's... Samadhi. Well, Samadhi can't be forced. Um, it can't be made to happen. And generally speaking, we experience samadhi when the, when the body is in action, actually. Uh, um, we're talking about, see, concentration, meditation, samadhi, they're all samadhi. Samadhi means the constant um, balance, constant equanimity. Constant, constant balance. Oh. Um, the, the state itself is the same state. Concentration, when you just have a momentary experience, transcendent experience. Meditation, when you have a string of moments of transcendent experience. Samadhi, when all of the moments are strung together. But again, concept will be that samadhi looks like this or looks like that. Concept. Try not to make it look like a thing. What's being described is the, the intellect, D, D, which is equanimous, which is balanced, uh, regardless sitting, standing, walking, conversing, street corner in New York City. Oh. In regard to the state that Hobby is talking about, that state state of transcendence, uh, when when all names and forms and everything just disappear, and there's no words about it. it it's not even an experience. Um, in those moments, in those moments, I can't move. I can't do anything. I can't um. function. There's no, there's nothing but total silence and being. Yeah, that's true for you. Yes. But it's not true for the body because the breath continues, etc. You're just right. not. Yeah. Right. 
So is is the goal? Yeah. So <laughs> is the goal to be able to be there while the body moves and while it moves and functions in the more goal ways than just breathing. Yeah, the goal is to be um, absorbed in the Lord. However that looks. However that looks. Mm. However that looks. On the inside, it'll look the same. On the outside, it'll look different. Oh. You know, we see it. We see it in all the different traditions, all the different saints, etc. We see it. It'll look one way in Swami Premananda, another way in Swami Shivananda, another way in a Sufi saint, etc. Um, another way in someone who's who's a poet. Another way in someone who's a dancer. Oh, yeah. But still, in other words, that experience you're talking about, sometimes the body's not moving, but sometimes you have that same experience when the body's moving. And by the way, it is still moving because the breath is still moving, the blood is still coursing through the veins, etc., etc. It's just you're not identified with it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Good discussion. <laughs> Let's close. Short final prayer in RT. <laughs> oh. Om Chayambakam Yajamehe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Vargai Rukameva Bandhanan Mritor Mokshiyama Mritat Om Chayambakam Yajamehe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Oi Rai Rukameva Bandhanan Mritor Mokshiyama Mritat Om Chayambakam Yajamehe Surandim Pushti Vardhanam Oi Rai Rukameva Bandhanan Mritor Mokshiyama Mritat Om Shanti 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 O adorable Lord of mercy and love let us abide in thee forever and ever. On below Sakura Shiva and Marjaki. And for all the saints and sages of all the traditions. Yeah. Oh, Hari, I just have this came. I just have to share this. Yes. So you can blank the mind now and you say, I didn't get anything. But that's just the mind that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. That didn't get anything. Mind, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not you. It's just the mind that didn't get anything. Yeah, you're undisturbed by all of it. So you're speaking from the perspective of conscious mind, wanting, wanting conscious mind to find that unity, oh, yeah, that's true. which is the I. Okay. Well, to do that, you have to continue to guide the conscious mind back to the I. It's an active practice. Ah. If you try to blank it, then the conscious mind will be on its own in some island somewhere and not having what it wanted. <laughs> and then when you say I didn't understand you're just speaking as conscious mind you're not you're not speaking as an I now I has no need to understand it's the conscious mind that's needing to understand it's the conscious mind that's needing union it's the person that's that's demanding union not the union is not demanding union <laughs> the person is demanding union so in order for the person to have that union, the person has to practice. And it has to practice in a, in a way that finally it, it is able to negate itself as an individual separate entity. And instead, see itself as an instrument, a servant of the one. And then that will be called freedom. <laughs> okay, so that's why practice is the is the way. And of course, one of the practices is relinquishment. Relinquishing what? Well, one of the great practices is relinquishing the notion that I am this person. <laughs> and who's doing that? Conscious mind is doing that. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Is that helpful? Yeah.
Oh, so.